Okay, so I'm just gonna step through the problems one by one. So the first problem asks you to simplify an expression and this expression involves powers of J. So everyone can see my, my uh, dot cam as the main view, is that correct? Can I get an amen? Is that, is, so is my, my dot cam showing up as a main display? I changed some uh, video settings. I can see it, but I think it knocked some people out because there's only five people on the Zoom. Yeah, it could be that. It might be that it's not mandatory for attendance. I'm, I'm not sure, but if it is, that, of course they can log back in hopefully, and if they can't, um, I just, they, they can contact me. So hopefully everything's okay. Okay, so we're gonna have powers of J. And what we wanna realize, the, the, the key fact here is that J to the fourth is equal to one. And so what this means is J to the fourth raised to any power is also equal to one, right? Because this is just J to the fourth raised to the nth power, which is one to the nth, okay? And, and so the way that we're gonna use this is we're going to express 22. If, if, if you wanna say this, we're gonna express this mod four. In other words, I'm gonna divide four into it. And what I'm really interested in is the remainder, okay? And so just to kind of convince you of this, I'm gonna write this as j to the 20th times j squared. And, and the reason why is if you divide four into 22, okay, it goes in five times evenly, right? And you have a remainder of two. So this is, this is kind of the, the rationale behind what we're doing. And again, I, I, I chose j to 20 because four divides into this evenly. So as long as four divides evenly into the exponent, j to that exponent is gonna be one. And this leaves me with j squared. And we recall that the square of j is negative one because j itself is the square root of negative one. Okay, so I, I'd like you to try that out on your problem. Um, see if you get this to work out. And if you don't, let me know and we can, we can take a look, okay? This is time that we have to really kind of make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, is, is anybody still working or are we all done? Is everyone, has, has anyone not got this or got this correct yet? I just wanna check. Okay. And so these problems on the exams, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll try to give you just really quick, you know, so on an exam, you know, they may give you something like J is 1,000, uh, you know, 1,352. And again, all you're going to do is you're just going to divide four into this and you're only interested in the remainder, right? So you can see it goes in evenly. So this is equal to j to the zero, which of course is, is one, okay? So they'll, they'll, they'll kind of do things like this, all right? Okay. All right, the next problem just wants us to express the number in terms of j. So I'm gonna share my screen and show you what I have. Uh, if you want to, you can kind of parrot what I have and then try it out on your problem. So you'll have something similar. You'll have the square root of, an, of uh, and under the square root, there'll be a negative sign and a number, right? And what they want you to do is they want you to write this as some real number. Times J. 
or some some expression in, in involving J. Okay. So the only thing you want to know here is that when you have an expression where you have a negative number, you have a negative sign, and here you have a real number. All you're going to do is you're going to split these apart, right? You're going to think of this really as negative one times your real number, whatever that is. And then and then you're going to use the fact that the root of a product is the product of the roots, okay? This this follows from the exponent rules. Okay. And now we'll just use the fact that this by definition is J. And it, it's generally convention that when we have a product of J and a real number, we write the real number first. You don't have to do this, but um, on the options that you're given, it will have this form. So if you look at your example, and if I if I go and I, I work my problem, right, it has this, it has this form. So what you want to do is you want to split off that negative sign as a negative one times the absolute value of the radicand, which is 5 sixteenths. And you're just going to write this as the square root of the absolute value of the radicand times j. So I'd like you to try that out, make sure it works. Uh, a little bit of it is kind of like learning the notation, right? Um, I think they have a J, don't they? They should. Okay, so when you go to more, they don't have a J. So in lieu of J, you have to click on I. Okay, and you, you might remember me telling you um, that mathematicians represent the imaginary number by I. So when you go to enter this, in my math lab, you have to click on I, okay? Even though people use J, it's, it's really not the conventional way of doing it. Uh, for some reason, it's counted mine as wrong. Let's see. Da, da, da. Uh, let me see. Okay, so it actually wants you to enter it as J, even though, so I take that back. Um, when I type I, it doesn't, it doesn't recognize it, okay, even though that's what's in the, the palette. So you actually do have to enter J. So, um, Ignore this and just and just enter J. Okay. A lot of times my math lab has the ability to recognize uh, equivalent expressions, but it doesn't in this one. So. Okay. So before we go on, any any questions though? Is everyone getting this? Uh, when you put in J, it's it's all right. Yeah, J worked for me. Okay, good, good. Yeah, I saw what was in the palette, but it doesn't. Um, it doesn't. Uh, they they still want you to use J. It's set up so that they still want you to use J. Okay. All right. So our next problem involves an expression with different powers of J. And we're gonna do essentially the same thing that we did um, back in problem one. So they want us to simplify the expression.
which in this case is j to the 18th for, for my problem. Yours will be slightly different. Minus j to the 22nd. And, and, and what this means when they say this is this means they want you to rewrite this. So what this actually means is either j to the first, j to the second, or j to the third, or just one. Okay, they, they, they want you to write this in, in terms of the powers of j with the remainder you get after you divide by four. So this is the same thing that's going on as in problem one. So if I look at j to the 18th, right, my exponent here, is 18. And again, I'm, I'm going to divide four evenly into 18, right? So four goes into 18 four times with two remainder. So what this means is that j to the 18th is equal to j to the 16th times j squared. And again, any exponent that four divides into evenly, any exponent that can be written as a multiple of four is automatically one. And this follows just from the basic definition of J. So we're left with J squared, which is negative one, all right? So now if I go back to my, to my original expression, right? So j to the 18th minus j to the 22nd, I can write the first term as negative one, okay? And after a while, I'm gonna do these problems a little faster. Now that we kind of understand that all we're gonna do is divide four into this number and, and just keep the remainder, right? We can see here that j to the 22nd, well, our exponent's 22. And that can be written as a multiple of four, which is 20 plus two. So what this tells us is that j to the 22 is equal to j squared, which is also negative one. Again, all we do is we keep the remainder after we divide by four. Okay. So down here, I'm gonna say minus a minus one. And so my final answer just ends up being zero. So try that out on your problem. And um, if you have any issues, just let me know. Okay. Are we ready to move on to problem four? All right? Yep. Now, if you aren't asked, I mean, this is, the, this is the time for truth, right? Like I always say, the homework is uh, where the rubber meets the road, and these are gonna be like the homework problems. So if you can do these, uh, you'll be sitting on ready for the homework. Okay, so problem four just asks us to find a complex conjugate of uh, a complex number.
And for my particular problem, the number is two plus three J. And so we recall that how we get the complex conjugate. There's actually a symbol for the complex conjugate, but I don't think the book uses it. So I'm just gonna write it in words. The only thing I do is I change, whoops, I'm sorry. Sometimes I'll slip. Okay. The only thing that we do when we take the complex conjugate, right, is we simply change the positive sign in front of the imaginary portion to a negative. That's it. So our answer here, right, so the, the complex conjugate of 2 plus 3j. All I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to rewrite the complex number exactly the same, the same real and imaginary components. And I'm just going to put a negative sign there. And that's all you have to do. Just change the algebraic sign in front of the imaginary portion. So there is a notation, if you like, writing things quickly, the notation for complex conjugate, there's different versions of this. Sometimes people put a bar over top. Sometimes people write this with a, a star. And it just means take the complex conjugate. But I'm not gonna use this notation. However, you can, if you find it, I find it much easier to write this than write this, you know. Okay. All right, well, if there aren't any questions on that, we'll, we'll move on to five. So five is a little bit of a curveball, and then it's asking you to add and subtract more than two complex numbers. So it says perform the indicated operations. And in, in my particular problem, is minus three plus six J minus six minus eight J minus two J. Now, I, I think I've mentioned this before. So, you know, when the computer generates the different responses algorithmically, they use machine learning. And they know the basic mistakes that students make. They know the common mistakes. And so they put, they, they make wrong responses that have the common mistakes. And the most common mistake that students make when they're, when they're subtracting a complex number is that they don't distribute the sign. I think in my problem is a negative sign there too. So it's always a good idea when you're, when you're subtracting a complex number to distribute the sign, especially on an exam. So basically, I'm going to distribute this negative sign across this sum, okay? So now I'm going to write this as minus 3 plus 6j plus 6 plus 8j minus 2j. So notice once you distribute that negative sign, you don't need the, the parentheses anymore. You actually don't even need them on the first uh, complex number, okay? And so the 
the relevant point here is that when we add complex numbers, we add all the real parts. So in other words, I'm, I'm gonna think of, the, of just the real numbers here as kind of like like terms, if you will. Okay. So in my case, this will end up being uh, a positive three. And we add all the imaginary parts. And, and by imaginary, we mean all the terms that have the imaginary number, right? So in our case, we're gonna add 6j, positive 8j, and negative 2j, okay? So I'll get 14 minus two, positive 12j. And so this is our final answer, right? Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah, do you guys have, do you have the exact same problem that I have or do you have a version of it? Does, does uh, anyone have? No, I'm just working off of yours, honestly. Okay, okay. It's always a good idea to work the problems in the, in the, in the My Math Lab. That way you kind of have an independent check, right? Otherwise you might be purely parroting, but whatever, whatever works for you. Okay, um, and also again, this issue of how you enter things, it's a good idea to use my math lab to make sure that you're knowing how, you know how to enter it correctly. A number of people got points taken off on the last exam just because of how they entered things. So always a good idea. Um, although it's a little beyond the scope of this course, well, it's in the book, but we're not doing it. Um, complex numbers can be thought of as vectors and the real part can be thought of as the X component. The imaginary part can be thought of as the Y component. So kind of leveraging what you know about vectors, you're adding all the X components or all the real parts, then you're add, adding all the imaginary um, parts or the Y components. That's, that's why addition works that way. Okay, um, we have any questions about five? Okay. All right, let's move on to multiplication now. So for problem six, it just says multiply. And in my problem, I have 7j times the quantity 2 minus 5j. Whoops. Okay. So when you're doing multiplication of complex numbers, don't use the formula, okay? It's, it's really making it a lot more complex than it has to be, pardon the pun. Um, what, what you really wanna do is you just wanna multiply it term by term, just foil it out. So 7J times two is gonna be 14J. So what I'm gonna do here, and even though I'm going to work it out, once you do this enough, you don't, you don't work it out. You just do it in your head. Okay. And that's, that's what we're basically doing. And so, of course, the first term is just 14J, right? There's nothing. Uh, J just acts like a symbol, okay? It just comes along. It but it obeys all the algebraic properties, right? It distributes and all this sort of stuff, just like a variable does. And the only thing we really have to watch out for is this J squared. 
right? And so here I'm gonna have minus 35 and the J squared is gonna be negative one. So it's gonna be positive 35. But let's go ahead and just write this out to be careful, okay? So we know that J squared is negative one. And if we put this in, we'll get 14J plus 35. Go ahead and try that with your problem. Now, the instructions ask you to answer, to enter your answer in the form of A plus B, J, okay? So we're supposed to enter our answer as A plus B, J. And what this reflects is the fact that when we write complex numbers, it's customary to put the real term first. So I think if you entered it in this form, it probably would count it as wrong. So you could think of this as uh, the standard form if you, if you wish, okay? And this will be our final answer. Okay. Okay. Um, do we need more time? Okay, very good. Uh, we'll work one more multiplication problem. And so in this problem, we're working uh, with, with two complex numbers and they both have a real and imaginary portion that's non-zero, right? So this is uh, two plus three J times six plus J. And so I'll show you a, a little hack that, that will help you a little bit, okay? okay what, I, what I wanna think about is what's going to give rise to the terms that are only real numbers. And, and what you should notice is that six times two is gonna be real. But so is three J times J. So two times six, well, we know that's 12, right? That's easy enough. But three J times J is minus three, okay? So we're gonna do those first. And this is something you can do in your head, right? 12 minus three, you know, piece of cake, right? Now you're gonna look at the terms that are gonna be purely imaginary. In other words, they're terms that are gonna have only J in them. And the way that you're gonna get that is by multiplying an imaginary term by a real term, right? So here, six times, 
3j is going to be 18j. And 2 times j is going to be 2j. Or not to j. Okay. And again, on an exam, you could do this in your head, right? 18 plus 2. Yeah, even I can do that, right? Just 20j. And that's going to be our answer. So a little efficient bookkeeping can really make these problems simple. Okay, to get to get the real terms, you multiply the real by the real and the imaginary by the imaginary, and you make the last one negative. So 12 minus 3, 9, 18. And so to get purely imaginary terms, you're gonna to have to multiply an imaginary by a real term, right? And I have two of those. So 18 plus 2j is 20j. Well, go ahead and try that out. See if you can get that to work. Okay. Um, would anyone like a little more time? All right. Now, tests tend to like division problems with complex numbers because they test a lot of your skills. They test whether or not you know what a complex conjugate is. They test um, multiplication of complex numbers and also addition and subtraction. So these are kind of good problems for teachers to give on exams. So let's look at the next problem because this involves a, a, a division. So problem eight says divide and you can go ahead and pull up yours. So mine happens to be, and yours is, yours is probably very similar in format, I would imagine. Now, uh, pro tip, when you're doing this, try to take out common factors from the denominator and numerator. Well, I mean, it's going to make things a lot easier for you, you know, and I don't, I don't know about you, but I like, I like easy, right? So what do I mean by that? Well, if I look at the numerator, there's a common factor of three in both terms, right? So what I notice is I can factor a three out of the top. And I can factor a three out of the denominator. So you, you have to make sure that you can take the same factor out 
of every term, right, in order to cancel it. So we can go ahead and do that. And now we're working with a simpler problem. It's, it's the same problem. It's exactly uh, equal, but it's simpler, right? So we remember that the first thing we always do is we multiply and divide the fraction by the complex conjugate of the, of the denominator, right? So what we want to do is we have to Okay. So our our denominator is six minus j, and we want its complex conjugate, right? And we know that all we have to do to get the complex conjugate is just change the sign on the imaginary term. Okay. And so this is the complex number that I'm going to multiply and divide my original fraction by. So we're gonna have six plus J, our original fraction over six minus J. Uh, don't forget to put them in parentheses, okay? You really wanna make liberal use of parentheses, right? Now, another, another pro tip. When you multiply an, a complex number by its conjugate, there's a very simple way to write it. So before I evaluate this, let me show you another, another pro tip here, okay? So notice that when you have a complex number multiplied by its conjugate, it's the square of the real part plus the square of the imaginary part. So nobody bothers to do this multiplication out, okay? And the reason why is the, the imaginary terms cancel. These cross terms cancel, okay? So I'm gonna say, okay, six squared plus, and the number multiplying J is one, right? So on the bottom, we're gonna get six squared plus one squared. Again, just squaring the, the real term, which is six and squaring the imaginary um, coefficient here, which is one, right? Now let's try to do our multiplication this easier way, right? So what is the real part gonna be? Six times six is 36. J times J is negative one. 36 minus one will be 35. I want you to try that on yours. Multiply the real parts and then take the product of the coefficients and make it, make it negative. So this is one times one, I'm making it negative. 36 minus one, okay? For the imaginary parts, okay, we're going to take J and multiply it by the real part of the other uh, term. So six plus six is 12, right? I have six J here and six J here. So I have 12 J total. 
And when all the mathematical smoke clears and I simplify the bottom, right, I'm going to get 35 plus 12J over 37. And they probably want you to split that up because they want you to write that as A plus BJ, right? So our final answer is just going to involve us splitting up the real and the imaginary part. So go ahead and take a minute and try that out in your problem. And if you run into any difficulties, let's, uh, let's take a look and see. And I'll post this video after class. So if you wanna go back and um, watch it, Okay, um, any issues or anything more we want to discuss regarding this problem? We're good. Okay, well, here's the problem we're looking for, the last one. Problem nine. Uh, again, another, another division problem, because this will probably be, along with the, the powers of J, division problems are probably the most difficult. So if you can do powers of J and division, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're pretty well set, right? Okay, so problem nine wants us to divide. And I'm gonna have uh, five plus six J in my numerator and six plus J in my denominator. And I'm going to do this a little faster now, okay? I mean, even though it's, it's kind of good to write everything out explicitly in the beginning, uh, as you gain facility with these problems, you want to write less and less and kind of do more of these calculations in your head, okay? So I know, okay, I have a division of complex numbers, right? Um, I, have a, I have a bona fide complex number because I have a J down here. So I'm going to have to multiply and divide by the complex conjugate of six plus J. So I know that that means I'm just the complex conjugate of my denominator, right? It just becomes a negative sign. Don't forget to multiply and divide by it. Okay, so using our pro tip, right? 36 plus one, right? It's the real part squared, which is six squared, plus the imaginary part squared, which is one squared. So we get 37 on the bottom. And, and, and try that, make sure that you feel comfortable because this will really save you a lot of time if you can realize how to do this quickly, right? Rather than, you know, you multiply all these out, it takes time, you can make a mistake, Right? There's these negatives and positives. So if you know this rule, it'll make life easier, faster, and you're going to be less prone to errors, which to me is a win-win-win, right? 
Okay, and now we're going to do multiplication. Remember how we're going to get the real part, right? So we're going to say 5 plus 6 is 30. Minus 6, but I make it a positive 6, is 6. 30 plus 6 is 36. That's the real portion. portion. 30. And it looks like I have a minus 6, but really the j squared makes it a positive 6, right? So I take this product and I change the sign. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6, but I change the sign because of the j squared and make it positive 6. Okay, now I want to work on the imaginary component. So I know that's going to come from multiplying the imaginary and the reals in the different expressions, right? So here I'm going to have 36j minus 5j. So that's going to be what? 31j. So getting used to this kind of finger method is going to, again, save you a lot of time, right? So 36 minus 5, 31. And of course, I'm going to split these apart. I want to write this as A plus BJ. And Fort Pitt, that's it. We have a minute left. Um, I'm going to stay later if you have any questions. If not, you're free to leave of your own recognizance. Have a great weekend and be safe, okay? Thank you. All right, you're very welcome. Thank you. All right. Interesting.